And I will say, well, the reason why we want to know this is because we can't truly, we can't truly love or fear or revere or respect anything or anyone if we don't know them. You know, when a man and a woman are mar married for a long time, okay, there's a love between them. There's a connection between them. And this love, you can't really describe it, but it grows and grows and grows. And the reason why it grows, it's, it, maybe it may start out, maybe attraction in the beginning, physical, but you see these people who have been married for 40, 50 years, it's not about attraction. It's because I know my wife, or I know my husband, or we know we've interacted with each other. We know who they are. We really know them inside out. And that knowledge of our spouses makes us love them more because we know them. At the same time, if I'm walking in the jungle, I'm walking in the jungle and I see a snake, I know that snake is dangerous. I, I have that knowledge. So I'm going to fear it, right? Or a tiger or whatever it may be. If you see it like a venomous spider, you know, it's, you fear it because you respect it. You don't have to necessarily fear, fear it, but you respect it because you know it's powerful. It has some power that if it was going to bite you, it's going to hurt you. So this is kind of the motivation. If we know who Allah is, then we'll have a better appreciation of maybe we'll get closer to Him, maybe we'll love Him more, maybe we'll revere Him more, respect Him more. Or for those who maybe don't want to believe, then it's their prerogative. Maybe they want to turn away from Him more. That's their prerogative, right? So let me give you a couple quick definitions from the Qur'an who Allah the Almighty is, as Muslims see it. He is the first and the last. He is the first and the last. The ascendant and the intimate, and he is of all things knowing. So he has infinite knowledge. This is one of the attributes or some of the attributes of Allah. Okay. He is the creator of all that exists, and he is the owner of all that exists. So looking at uh, some verses in the Quran, I'll read them in English for the sake of time, and I'll, I'll maybe get back to the Arabic if there is time. He is Allah. Other than him, there is no deity, knower of the unseen and the seen, and the witnessed. He is the entirely merciful, especially merciful. So he knows everything, hidden and seen. Unknown to us, he knows it. He knows what's in our hearts. And he is entirely merciful, abundantly merciful. He is Allah, other than whom there is no deity. So our creator, no statue can be associated with him, no image, no creation. He is above his creation. The sovereign, the pure, the perfection, the bestower of faith, the overseer, the exalted in might, the compeller, the superior, exalted is Allah above whatever they associate with him. He is Allah, the creator, the inventor, the fashioner. To him belongs the best of names and attributes. Whatever is in the heavens and earth is exalting him, and he is exalted in might, the wise. These are some of the things we believe about Allah, our creator. A very critical thing and maybe a difference between when we say Allah and God or because you know one of the things I want to get step back a little bit why Muslims prefer to use the word Allah so I, I've seen some people who argue you know and they argue oh you don't want to use Allah Allah is a totally different God he's a moon God so you just have to smile about that seriously <laughs> that's all I got to say moon God seriously that's the best you got Allah is the creator of the moon. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He is our creator. But one thing is, we don't like to use the word God because, you know, God could be used, if you look at it in English, could be used to add an S to it, so you can say gods. And you can add ESS to it, you become goddess. So now you're attributing plurality to God and you're attributing gender to God. That's why we like to use Allah instead because you can't say Allah's or Allah or whatever, make it fem. You can't. Allah, it's a proper name. 
cannot be, you can't make it plural, you can't give it gender. Okay, so this is one of the reasons why Muslims prefer to use the word Allah, although we use Almighty God in our sermons all the time. So one thing is, when we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the exalted, the glorified, there's an attribute that's unique to the Muslims. And that is, he does not get tired. He does not fall asleep. He is perfect. He is almighty. He doesn't need to rest. So in a verse in the Quran, Allah is described himself as, Allah, there is no deity except him, the ever-living, the sustainer of all existence. Neither drowsiness overtakes him nor sleep. He doesn't get tired. This is the definition of an almighty God. To him belongs whatever in the heavens, is in the heavens and whatever is on earth. Who is it that can intercede with him except by his permission? There's no intercession. Unless he wills it, unless he allows maybe a prophet or a messenger to come and intercede on our behalf, nobody can confront him and intercede. He knows what is presently before them and what will be after them, and they, he, and they, will, they encompass not a thing of his knowledge except for that what he wills. His throne extends over the heavens and the earth, and their preservation tires him not, and he is the most high, the most great. He is the most high, the most great. He is the creator, and he tells us that he created everything from water. Allah has created every living creature from water, and of them are those that move on their bellies, and of them are those that walk on two legs, and of them are those that walk on four Allah creates what He wills. Indeed, Allah is over all things competent. So He is our creator. He creates everything. everything. Everything we see around us, He created it. This is just like Abraham. He knew He had a creator. He created all these things. All human beings, all creatures. This is who, we be, who Allah is. He also created diversity and tolerance. He created us in different colors and shapes and forms to teach us tolerance and love for each other and so that we can know each other. So he says in the Quran, and of his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth and the diversity of your languages and your colors. Indeed, in that are signs for those of knowledge. So it's something that he is proud of, that he created black, white, green, yellow, whatever you want to call it. He created us in a diverse, diverse. So there's no one race that's pure or superior over any other race. Unfortunately, history has, people have historically abused this, where they thought, you know, one race has evolved, if you will, more than the other. Therefore, they justified, justified the oppression and the murder of other races and other nations, unfortunately. And some in the name of God, unfortunately. But Allah clearly tells us in the Quran, no, this is something you guys should celebrate, your diversity and your colors and your different languages. And he created everything from smoke as well. Then he directed himself to the heaven while it was still smoke and said to it and to the earth, come into being willingly or by compulsion. And they said, we have come willingly. So he ordered. This is something, if you, if you look at from the scientific perspective, the concept of the Big Bang Theory, how everything started from smoke. This is not in contradiction with what Allah tells us in the Quran. That something, there was some smoke and Allah in space decided to order these cosmos to become and earth was formed and everything else was formed. The stars were formed and the planets were formed. <clears throat> 